Understanding the differences between LANs and WANs are the fundamental principles of networking. My name is Nico. I am an IT technician at PowerTech Wireless Technology, and I am here to simplify these network types and help you understand them better. But before we dive into the world of LAN and WAN, we'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button on our channel. We've got loads of great content coming up, including connectivity and tech updates, as well as product reviews. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. So let's break it down. LAN stands for Local Area Network, and it's a network that covers a small area, like a building or office campus. It's like your own private network that connects devices within your space. Think computers, printers, cameras, and other building devices. They can all be part of a LAN. The cool thing about this is LAN has a higher speed data transfer rate and low latency which means you can share files and communicate with others in the network quickly and without much delay. Now let's move on to WAN. WAN stands for Wide Area Network. Unlike LAN, WAN covers a huge geographical area. They connect multiple LANs or networks that are far apart. A good example for WAN is the internet, which is actually the biggest WAN in the whole world. The purpose of WAN is to facilitate communication and data transfer between widely separated locations. Because WANs cover such vast distances, the data transfer rates tend to be lower compared to LANs, and there's usually more latency due to longer distances and multiple network hubs involved. When it comes to ownership, LANs are typically privately owned and controlled by a single organization, creating a sort of um, network bubble just for them. WANs can be privately owned by organizations or operated by a service provider who offer network connectivity to different locations. In terms of technology, LANs commonly use Ethernet and Wi-Fi as their underlying technology. As for WANs, they rely on various technologies such as fiber, cellular coverage, or satellite connections. So let's look at our example. Today we'll be using the RGEG 105 gp Ruji router. So as you can see here, the Ruji router has four LAN ports, which means you can connect um, your computer, your laptop, your printer, and even your camera through these ports, and they can all connect or communicate locally. And this offers a high speed transfer between those devices. And as you can see here, we also have two WAN ports. So if you want to connect to the internet or if you want to connect to a remote office, this is what you use to connect to the devices. One good thing about having two WAN connections is you can load balance or bond multiple WAN connections together for, for increasing bandwidth or data throughput. So for example, if one connection goes down, for example, your NBN has a problem for some reason, you can automatically switch over to another network which normally is a cellular network through an LTE router. And this all happens in the background without any connectivity issues. Here at PowerTech, we have a very wide range of products to keep you covered, no matter what your circumstances may be. Please head on to powertech.com.au or call us on 1-300-769-378 if you have any questions. Please feel free to comment below. Don't forget to follow our socials for product reviews, tech tips, and best connectivity solutions out there. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you later.